Hey everyone, Ken and Profit here with another Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to use geometry nodes to create an asteroid field, complete with a little bit of the animation nodes added in there to get a nice rotation. So by the end of this, you'll be able to use curves, uh, whether it's just a circle curve or if you want to just draw curves uh, in Blender to instance asteroids, make a nice dynamic asteroid field that uh, is totally art directable. So we're going to be using these asteroids that you can download totally for free. Link in the description. If you want to make your own asteroids, it's really, really easy because Blender actually ships with, uh, if you go to your preferences here, they ship with this extra objects add on. And if you enable that, then you can press, uh, let me go to solid mode here. You can press shift A and add in a rock generator. And then down here, there's this default option to create an asteroid. And then voila, you have an asteroid. <laughs> so really, really fun. That's all I did. I just created five different random ones by using different seed values and then put a procedural texture on there. And uh, it's pretty effective. It looks pretty good. So make your own asteroid if you want to, or just download these totally for free, like I said. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, how do we set up a geometry nodes network where we can instance these dynamically and just simply draw asteroids if we want to. So this is going to be kind of similar to my draw fire tutorial. If you saw that similar concept uh, with a few tweaks, so I'm going to press shift a and add in just a simple Bezier curve. Okay. And I might just rotate one of these handles around like so. And now with that done, let me go to geometry nodes and I'll go back to the top view. I don't need my spreadsheet here, so I'm just going to close that out and create a new network. All right, so the curve is my input geometry here, which is uh, going to be what allows us to draw anywhere. All right, and we can name our geometry nodes network asteroids. And now we just press shift A and add in a curve to points node and just drop that in. So let me scale this up. Uh, and then you can, of course, grab these two, right click and subdivide your curve. And now you have an extra point there that you can move around. OK, so now we've got 10 points scattered along our curve here. And you can adjust that value, of course, if you want more or less. Uh, but if we just leave it at that if, and we extrude out, those 10 points are going to be spread out over the length of the curve. A pro method is to just use the length option here. And then just crank this up a bit till the density makes a little more sense, something like that. And now what this length does is you can extrude the curve and it'll just keep the same level of density along the curve, no matter where, um, where you move the thing. So this is what will allow us to kind of dynamically create any shape of asteroid field we want uh, while maintaining the density. And it also gives us this essentially a density input that we can feed into our group input here. So what that means, if we grab this group input, you can see over on the right hand side, we get this underneath our geometry nodes modifier, we get this same length function. So we can rename this underneath the group tab here, we can rename this to be just a density slider. And so now you can adjust your density right there um, in your modifiers panel without having to go into your, your geometry nodes network. It's just a way of making this tool be uh, just a bit more functional to actually use in, you know, a, a <laughs> we'll call it a production environment. All right, so now we have our points on that curve and we need to instance our asteroids on those points. So really easy, just drop in an instance, whoops, if I can spell, instance on points node and then grab this collection and move it right into the geometry nodes network and feed it into the instance input. And now we're instancing, we're instancing the entire collection on this curve, which isn't really what we want. We want it to uh, separate each object, reset them and then pick one. So that now it's instancing a separate asteroid on each point of that curve. Now, if we want these asteroids to be random scale value, then it's very easy. This is very similar to how uh, a lot of my geometry nodes tutorials go. We create a random value node and plug it into the scale. It's fine if this is a vector, and then you can just increase the scale value here so that it's picking a random scale from zero to let's say 15 for these individual asteroids there. Okay. 
So, uh, you know, if you move this around, it's going to just keep rolling the dice on these random values. And that's something, you know, that's very important. You get this dynamic adding of asteroids, but then the scale stays random, which is really cool. Uh, but you'll notice the rotation is not so random. So let's duplicate this random value node. And this time let's use a vector because uh, rotation, we want to be able to rotate the X, Y, and Z. So the minimum we can leave to zero and then the max, if we just feed this into rotation, you can adjust however much you want these, the random di dice to be rolled, giving random value rotation to, this is not the actual animation part of it. This is just, just the initial scattering of the asteroids and giving them random rotation right there. Okay, so uh, that's kind of just setting up the basic function to allow you to draw asteroids so if you wanted to delete all of these points grab the draw tool oops that's you don't want to grab the annotate tool the actual draw curve tool so now we can draw a curve that wasn't a very good curve and there we are drawing uh asteroids just like that all right so now what if we want to use the uh in animation nodes to make sure that these have a little bit of animation to them no matter where we draw them well, that's uh, really easy to add. Just drop in a simulation zone node, and we're going to feed that right down here. And I'm going to take my instance output into the simulation input and then feed that back up. And you'll notice we lose the shader for all of these. Um, and that's no problem. All we have to do is drop in a material set material node and then grab our asteroid material. And then there you go, it's all linked up again, just like that. Now within this simulation input, whatever happens here is gonna just keep being applied to whatever is being instanced on our curve here. So let's say if we just want there to be constant rotation on Y, all we have to do is press Shift A and do rotate instances and drop that in. And now if we press play, Nothing's going to happen because we don't have a value on anything in here. But if we just add, uh, you know, one along the X rotation, then all of those are going to be rotating along the X just indefinitely. It's just a consistent, constant rotation. So this is a really cool, easy way of uh, adding simple animation to things without having to set up drivers and stuff like that or without having to use keyframes. Just keep in mind that obviously it gets dangerous because it's going to be consistently applied no matter no matter what. Um, I mean, there's there's ways of setting controls and things like that, but I didn't want to get into a whole simulation nodes tutorial that there's there's great ones out there. But this is just kind of a very basic way of adding a little bit of rotation automatically. So let's say we do 0.5 on X and maybe some random on Z just for I don't know why to just have them all kind of tumble in any direction like that. Now you get some nice rotation there. And of course you could take this output and feed it into your group input node right there. And now you get a rotation value right here, which we call, we could call this anim rotation. There you go. And now we, we can set the rotation speed right here just by adjusting that, which is pretty cool. And we can do the same with the scale. You could take the scale of the nodes and plug it into your group input. Uh, you can take anything into the group input and you get this nice little functional tool over here, which is pretty great. All right, so let me kind of clean up our node network here a little bit so you can see it better. So that's it. There you go. That's our geometry nodes network making an asteroid field uh, in Blender. And you can draw these asteroids. Um, and now that we have pretty much all the functions we need hooked up to the tool here, you could just go back into layout and uh, make use of this tool. So let me delete these vertices and just go back into edit mode with my curve selected and I can draw. And there you go. I have asteroids. I press play. Uh, oh, one thing about the simulation zone is if you make an edit to the curve, you got to go back to frame one in order for those to show up again. So that's just an important thing to note. If you're in the middle of a timeline, 
say they're rotating and you draw, you won't see them reflected because we use the simulation zone nodes. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's a bug, but just make sure you jump back to frame one and then you'll see them. Uh, and of course you can go into edit mode and make adjustments to the curve. But like I said, make sure you're on frame one when you do that in order to see it updated, okay? And now again, we have the scale of the asteroids that we can adjust. Uh, and then the uh, the amount of animation rotation that we have. So if you want to speed them up on a certain axis, you can do that as well. So this just allows you to create some really fun asteroid fields dynamically. You can draw them wherever you want to. And, uh, you know, you always need asteroids for space renders and stuff like that. This tool will allow you to set up an easy way where you're like, yeah, I just need a few more asteroids over here. You just draw it. Boom drawn asteroids <laughs> and then of course they dynamically animate and they look really really cool so there you go that's setting up an asteroid generator inside of blender i hope this was useful Ho hopefully you guys uh found it fun and you can use it in your projects grab those free asteroids link in the description and huge thank you to all the patreon supporters uh you guys really mean a lot to me so thanks for your support shout out to all of you thanks so much everyone i'll see you in the next tutorial